picking up from where I left off last time now, there are those type of atheists too that when you say to them, or if you were to ask them, look, if I was to give you enough evidence which would convince you beyond a shadow of a doubt that God exists, would you worship Him? And in return they say, no. Now this highlights, whenever this happens, this highlights to us something very, very profound, which is that when it comes to accepting and acknowledging the existence of God, which by the way is a part of our very nature as human beings, which is another video and I'll talk about that later, but sometimes we would deny the truth, not because we don't have good reasons to believe it, but because it goes against our own very wants and desires. God in the Quran speaks about this phenomenon very clearly throughout. For example, he says that for such people, if we were to open up a gateway, a portal into heaven, and they started to ascend or climb through it, they would still deny it. They would say, look, our eyes have bewitched us. We're just seeing things. We're hallucinating. We're deluded. But they won't accept or acknowledge the truth. Right? Such people, if, even if angels came in front of them, they would deny it. Even if parchment or scripture or pieces of paper came down from the heavens, if they were to see such things, if such evidence was, evidences were to be presented to such people, even then, even then they would deny, and this highlights that evidence has very little to do with it sometimes, at least for some people. And it's to do with their internal emotional state. Their intellect, their rational faculties become almost like a lawyer to justify what's going on inside them. And this we do as human beings, we all fall into this trap sometimes. How many times have you been on a diet? Think about this, when you go on a diet, and you have been eating chicken breast, breast and broccoli for the past three or four days, say you come home and you smell, as you open the door, you smell this hot slice of pizza, and you walk in into your living room and you see this huge 18-inch pizza on the table. How quickly would you justify a slice to yourself? Oh, I've been really good for the past couple of days. I can have a slice. Or I'll eat today and I'll make up for it tomorrow. We justify things to ourselves. Whatever we want deep down, we will find a way of justifying that. And that's quite dangerous. That's very dangerous when it comes to the question of God and our existence and our purpose. Should we deny the reality of God, the one that created us for a specific purpose, just because it doesn't, His existence and what He has asked us to do doesn't sit well with what we desire, what we want? Because when we do this, we have actually taken ourselves as God. We have become our own gods. We do what we want to do. Our desires rule us. And that is a, a terrible, terrible form of slavery that I wish upon nobody. I've been there at a point in my life from some respects. Many of us have been there. You may be suffering from that right now. Don't let yourself become a slave to yourself. If you truly want freedom and liberation, that's something we all aspire for, especially in the world that we live in. If we truly want to be liberated, then realize that the only way to do that, truly, is to submit yourself to your Creator. Because as soon as you submit to God, it frees you from the slavery of everything and anything else. You are no longer a slave of created things. right? However, when you turn away from God and you deny God and you deny your Creator, and therefore by extension deny the purpose of your existence, then inevitably you will end up being a slave to one thing or another, or even yourself as we discussed already. So the choice is yours. You know, Islam offers you true freedom. The thing that you want, the thing that we're deluded in believing that we have in the world that we live in today, if you truly want freedom, it's only going to be through submitting yourself to your Creator. And the way you're going to do that is if you remove all of the misinformation and the, the baggage you may have regarding Islam and to look into Islam for yourselves. And just genuinely have a read, consider the Qur'an, consider Islam and see what it has to say and offer you. Right? And one of the things is, as I've said, is freedom, true freedom, true liberation in its true sense. But if you don't, then you could choose to live the way you want because God has given us all that free will to express and exercise and the choices with you. I'll leave you guys with that. Let me know your thoughts below in the comment section. Make sure to engage there and until next time, take care.